Hello. In my shed, I have two batteries, let's say, uh, big batteries. One which is charged periodically, daily, I suppose, because it's charged by solar. It's a big eight cell battery, a bit like this. It's not actually this one, but it's similar to this. It's quite big. And a second battery, which is going to be smaller, probably four cell, probably a 12 volt uh, battery, which runs the lights in the shed. So that one, of course, is not being charged by solar. So what I want is a system, and I have shown this before, and I called it give and take, where the uh, solar charged battery can, when it's above a certain voltage, offer charge to the lighting battery. The lighting battery will only take that charge if it's below a certain voltage. So here on my little test setup on the bench, I'm simulating the lighting battery with this set of supercapacitors. Uh, I'm using supercapacitors because things happen quickly. Um, I've even got some lights on this actually. Um, they're over here, they're a bit out of focus, but I can switch them on with that banana plug. And now you can see uh, the voltage on this voltmeter falling because I've switched the shed lights on. Now this device here, um, which is essentially a charge controller, shows you the voltage on those supercapacitors, 13.1. And you have two buttons here. This one tells you the low voltage, 12 volts, and this one tells you the upper voltage, 14 and a half. Now, if, it, if the voltage on my battery drops between uh, before, sorry, drops below the low voltage of 12 volts, then this relay will turn on and that will connect um, a charger. That's the purpose of this thing. It connects a charger to the battery. It has to be current limited uh, because you don't want to um, put infinite current into the battery. But yeah, it'll connect a charger to the battery. The battery will charge up, the voltage will go up. And when it hits the upper limit of 14.5 volts, the relay drops back out again. So let's see that in action. I've uh, switched on those light bulbs. So this capacitor is now draining more quickly. And when this gets down to 12 volts, the relay will turn on. There's a little red LED there, which will show you that the relay is turned on. It's very close to happening now. So here it goes, 12.1 volts, now 12 volts. Uh, it should now turn that relay on. It has turned that relay on. And now the uh, current limited power supply, which is acting as a charger, is charging my battery, supercapacitors in this case, back up. And when it hits the upper voltage, which is set to 14.5, the relay will turn back off and this red LED will go off. Now, also in my give and take system, I have a discharge controller. This one actually can be configured as a charge controller or a discharge controller, that's just gone off. Um, so if you configure this as a discharge controller, if the voltage gets up above a certain voltage, the relay switches on, which switches on a load. Now in my case, the load is this buck boost. So your source battery has this discharge controller, then there's a buck boost in the middle here, then there's a charge controller on the destination battery. And if the source um, a discharge controller is saying you can have some charge and the uh, destination charge controller is saying I would like some charge, then charge, of course, gets transferred. But one aspect of this charge controller I didn't particularly like. If I turn off my uh, buck boost converter here and actually disconnect it, you can see that this device here is being powered by the destination battery. And I wasn't particularly keen on that idea. And as also this display is on all the time um, because this will could theoretically gradually be drained right down to, um, well, it's about six volts. This thing shuts off and stops. Actually, it's a bit lower than that. I think it's more like about four volts when this actually start, stops drawing current um, but anyway you don't want to be taking a 12 volt battery down to four volts now of course this isn't likely to happen very often um, because as i say my source battery is being charged by solar so theoretically it's being charged every day but some days are not as bright or sunny as others 
So what I wanted to find was a charge controller, something that switches on the relay when the voltage gets down to a low level, but which isn't powered from the battery side, but which is powered from the charger side. And I found one. And it's this, it has the same 30 amp relay. That's a 30 amp relay. I just took the lid off this one because it was proving to be a bit intermittent. But I mean, these modules are so cheap. They're like $3 each. Um, you can probably buy the whole module cheaper than you can actually buy the relay on its own. Now this one is uh, interesting. It's got an LCD and it's also got a mode where it can turn off the backlight to the LCD. So it can be put into a low power mode, but also crucially, it draws its power from the charger side not the battery side. So I'm just going to swap this in. I've already put um, banana sockets on there. I can switch that out pretty easily. So I'll pull out pos and neg of my battery, make sure they don't short because there's a lot of charge on that super cap. Take this one out, put in the uh, LCD discharge controller and this one is called an HW749. Put that on the blue tack, connect up the um, battery, which is my super cap. Let's connect that to the output and nothing happens because this one is powered from the charger side. So let's connect up the charger. Let's make sure that's on, plug it in and immediately it comes on and uh, the voltage on the capacitor is high enough. This is set to the same settings, I think. Down is 12, up is 14 and a half, and there's no timer. Up is some sort of timer. I'm not interested in the timer, so I'm not going to worry too much what it is. So now, if the give part of the system, this relay here, which is over here somewhere to the left of my buck boost converter, if that turns off because the source battery doesn't have enough voltage, and I can simulate that by just turning off my buck boost, this thing completely shuts down. And so it's not presenting a drain on the destination battery, which is now going to sit there with no load on it. So <laughs> theoretically, that's the uh, solution to the problem. But of course, there is an additional problem. There always is, isn't there? So let's turn this back on. 14.3 volts on the supercapacitor. I'll now connect my bulbs, which means that the supercapacitor voltage will drain down. And when this gets to 12 volts, this relay will put the red LED on, ask to draw uh, current from the source side and charge the capacitors back up. So the destination battery is down to 12.2 volts. Now this one reacts at the voltage you set. For some reason, this one reacts a little bit below it. I don't know why. So when this gets to 12.0 volts, it's currently saying 4% of the range between 12 and 14 and a half. 12.0 volts, the relay will switch on like that. The red light will come on and the destination battery will now charge back up because the source battery has charge available. But what if it doesn't? Say the source battery is saying, oh, sorry, run out of charge. I'm going to switch off. So I've switched that off and the voltage is now on my destination battery falling because it's not getting any charge. But this has stuck on in a sort of latched on state. And now what will happen is my destination battery, I can actually uh, take those light bulbs off because it's discharging fast enough because it's powering the relay coil which does get warm so it takes a fair bit of current. Um, this is latched on and in fact this unit will go down to about three volts before the relay drops out and that will completely discharge the destination battery. So what's happening here? Because this is powered by the charger and yet it seems to be now powered because the charger's disappeared by the destination battery. Well what's happening is the relay is on and the relay is simply connected between the two reds. The two uh, negative, the black ones here are connected together on the PCB. So what's happening is that the destination battery is back feeding through the battery input of this device, through the relay, which is on, back to this point here, the charger input. And this is where it's tapped off, goes to that capacitor, goes to the little buck converter that generates, I don't know, five volts or three volts for the 
3.3 volts for the microcontroller. And so it's holding the circuit on, it's holding the device on, the device is holding the relay on, and that's maintaining this link back through here. So this is kind of uh, something which breaks my system because I don't want to get into a situation where the destination battery is holding this relay on, powering up this display, and will ultimately, this would be a battery, not a super capsule, it would last many hours, but ultimately it could discharge right down to three volts. That's not ideal. So I want this module to be able to pass current from this red through the relay to here in order that the charger can charge the destination battery. But if the charger is not there, I don't want this to get in a latched on state and pass current from the battery back through the relay to uh, the charger input. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That requires a diode. So looking at the back of this unit, um, I think I want to put a diode in this track that runs from charger positive to the relay uh, armature, I suppose it is. So I want to cut through here. Now, fortunately on the front of the board, there are a couple of points about sort of there and there that I can drill through, put a couple of holes in and then fit a diode. But what I'd also like to do is maintain the specification of this thing that it can switch 30 amps and finding a diode that can uh, pass 30 amps and not get so hot that it destroys itself is pretty tricky because if you think about it, 30 amps multiplied by 0.6 volts, so amps times volts equals watts, is 18 watts. That's a lot of heat. That's the sort of heat that a soldering iron generates. So I don't think there are gonna be many diodes that can do that without a lot of heat sinking. And even if this were a shock key, you're still looking at nine watts. So I think the notion of using a standard diode is uh, out. But what I think will work is something like this. This is an ideal diode, <laughs> not ideal of course, but a little bit more ideal than a standard uh, diode. This is actually a MOSFET, but you, you get the point. Um, these things use MOSFETs um, and a little controller chip. This is a little six pin uh, controller chip. And I will do a video on ideal diodes actually, because they're quite interesting. Um, this has an on resistance of something like one milliohm, I think it is. So, ooh, let's do the maths. Yes, one milliohm, 30 amps would give a volt drop of 30 millivolts. Now, of course, the volt drop on a shock key is more like 300 millivolts dropped. So this would be running at a tenth of the power dissipation. Uh, so the nine watts would become... 0.9 watts. Yeah, I mean, this should be uh, running at about one watt, which sh this should be able to dissipate. Uh, it's got quite a nice surface area on those two MOSFETs there. This should work, I think, up to the full 30 amps. That's what I reckon. So I want to drill a couple of holes in here. Um, one through there or about there, let's just mark them first, and one about up there. So I'll continue drilling those holes and then I'll cut this track. Then I'll solder some uh, fairly fat uh, tinned copper wire legs onto these two long pads and we'll fit the diode onto this module. Right, not the most beautiful job. I should have moved that hole round a bit so this could be a bit squarer on, but never mind. So what I've got now is a charger positive input goes through the diode. Let's get my pointer and runs down to the relay. And then that when closed runs through to battery positive, but battery positive can't run back through the relay and back through this diode in the reverse direction, back to the charger input, which is where power for the circuitry is tapped off. So that should do it. Let's give it a try. 
Okay, so the uh, destination battery, my supercapacitor, had discharged a bit. So I'm charging it back up. Now, interestingly, this every couple of seconds is pulsing. And I think that's the ideal diode because these two terminal ideal diodes are on most of the time, but not all of the time. There's a brief 2% time when it just becomes body diode because it has to recharge its capacitor. But I'll talk more about that in my ideal diode video. But this is charging up that pulsing of the ideal diode is becoming less apparent now. So I'll charge this up, but actually I can sort of test it now because if the charger disappears, if I switch it off, then this powers down because it can't now back feed from the battery back through this diode the wrong way, that can't happen, to the uh, charger input and power this circuitry. That no longer works. And so now the battery is not being drained through the relay because the relay is turned off. If I now turn my uh, buck boost converter back on, this powers up, realizes the voltage is low, turns the relay on and continues to charge the battery. So that works. So that completes my reworking of the uh, give and take system. You have the give relay, which is a discharge controller, a suitable buck boost converter, and the take relay, which is a charge controller, but with this additional diode put into circuit, so this can't lock on. Yeah, that's the system. That's the system that's going to go out into the shed. But that's it for this video, so cheerio.